Hello and welcome to episode two of Manx Man Matt Plays. Um, this series is called European Domination Blues. Uh, my name is Matt and uh, today we're going to be playing FC Ball and Liverpool. Just to go, move on from the, uh, the the last episode, the transfer window has now closed. I have made a couple more transfers. Um, I brought in Giuseppe Rossi on a free because I realised that we only had two strikers at the club and the rate that people get injured at is ridiculous on this game. Um, so I I needed to have a third third striker. I don't want somebody who's going to be here long term uh, because obviously we've got players out on loan that will be able to to do that job. And if not, we can buy somebody who is better next season. So I brought in um, Giuseppe Rossi. I've not given him a long contract. Um, he's injured still and um, he hasn't actually been fit since he since he came to the club but he's certainly good enough to play in the the likes of the the league cup and um, the fa cup early rounds and if we uh do get an injury to Batshuayi, he'd be he'd be good enough to sit on the bench i wouldn't be happy if we got a long-term injury to morata i think we'd, we'd really struggle but there's nothing we could do. We didn't have any any enough funds left over to buy a, a, a decent replacement striker. That'll certainly be something we'd look to do next season. Uh, the next one I brought in was a, a young centre-back, uh, Lucas Mou. Uh, he's come in. He's two-star um, ability already. He's got a potential to be three-and-a-half-star, which I think would put him as the best centre-back at the club. Uh, he looks like he's going to be a, a world-class defender. Um, German, 20 years old. He's not yet been capped for the, the first German first team, but um, it wouldn't surprise me if he gets there fairly quickly. He's played one game already in the League Cup and played really well. He got a 7.2. Didn't look out of position in our in our starting eleven. To be honest with you, I, I may well look to use him more than I use uh, Christian Zapata. But I didn't know at the time that I, ha I had the funds. Um, we actually requested more wage budget because I wanted to bring Rossi in, and they gave us enough to for me to throw ten million pounds into transfer budget and still stay within our wage budget. So um, that's where the, the the funds to buy him came from. And finally, um, I brought in Leo da Silva Lopez. Um, for those of you that watch any of the Lulu show. Um, stream early on or watched his Christmas video. Um, he's a Peterborough United player. Um, he's already a two-star two-star ability for a Premier League club. Um, again, he played in the, the League Cup as well. He got an 8.9, which tells you just how good he is. Uh, I, I think he's going to be an absolutely fantastic player. He's incredibly versatile. Play right wing, centre mid, left wing back, right wing back. Um, and he does them all fairly well. I mean, this says that his his best position is attacking midfielder right. I would actually say that he's more likely to get games at central midfield. Uh, he he's as you can see fairly competent in any role in central midfield. He can also do jobs at left wing back or at right wing back. Um, and I think I'm going to be training him a little bit more as a central midfielder. And then we'll look to train him as a right wing back as well, or possibly a left wing back. But uh, he's he's come in, he's played very well on his debut, um, and he's a, he's a player that I've I've heard of. Came up on the scout reports as a, again fairly good. He's, I think he was four star potential when I uh, when I bought him, but still three and a half star potential is still certainly good enough to sit on our bench for the next ten years. And he's only uh, eighteen years of age. Is it? Yeah, so he's he's only going to get only going to get better in the next few seasons. I'm uh, excited to have him in the team. Okay, so we're getting to the first game of the episode. We're going to play ball. We're at home. We've lost our first game in the Champions League. I think we're going to stick with the the three at the back formation. Um, I've not had much luck. With the other formations, we've also had a bit of uh, poor time with injuries. So both William and Pedro are injured, as is David Luiz. Uh, so we haven't quite got a full strength team to pick from. So if we look at the lineup that we're planning on using today, we're going to play Thibaut Courtois in goal, 
Christensen, Cahill and Rudiger at centre-back. Victor Moses at right-back. Marcus Alonso at left-back. We've got N'Golo Kante and Bakayoko in central midfield. We've got Arda Turan on the right. Eden Hazard on the left. And Morata um, as a complete forward. Uh, let me just change his role from support to attack. On the bench, we've got Zappacosta, Azpilicueta, Lopez, Fabregas, Ozil, and Batshuayi, um, and Willy Caballero. Let's get into today's game. And for those of you that are interested, this is the, uh, the FC Ball team. Now, they're not playing the formation that um, I was expecting. Our scouts had said they'd be playing uh, a similar formation to us, but with defensive midfielders. Obviously, you can see that's not the case. Um, it doesn't bother me too much. The only player... I think I maybe have heard of Griggs as well, but Van Van Wolfswinkel is obviously former Premier League player, um, but it's not a, a team of players that I I'm very familiar with. Hopefully, we should be able to to beat this squad of players. Hazard with a cross in, and Rudiger has put it wide. Victor Moses throws the ball in. Turan's taken it back out to Turan, back to Yoko, out to Turan again, into Kante. Out to Turan again, back to Yoko, out to Eden Hazard. Just passing the ball around the midfield here, we're not really doing much. Morata is now through, Morata crosses it in, Kante, and that's a goal. Looks like that was a header from N'Golo Kante at the back post, I'm going to guess. Let's see it in 3D. Back to Yoko plays it out, Morata swings the ball in, and Kante heads it back across the face of the keeper. Puts the keeper off guard, and that's in 1 0. Courtois clears the ball forward. Alonso wins it back. Hazard's going through, and it's a terrible shot from Eden Hazard. First attack for, for Baal here. Been fairly slow. That they had an opportunity with all their players in the box and didn't swing it in. Well blocked by Gary Cahill. Schneider in. Lucia Van Wolfswinkel and Courtois. That's Terrible goalkeeper by the looks of that. Looks like the shot was shaped straight down his throat and he's just palmed it into the bottom corner. So it's just a passing game. Van Wolfswinkle. Courtois should have done a lot better there. So that first first half has not gone to plan. Um, we've had more shots, but we've only had one shot on target. Um, we need to be a lot more clinical. I've turned work ball in the box on to try and stop us taking shots from range, but it's still happening. Um, again, I don't see the point in these little bits. We're gaining possession well in central areas of the field, moved well in attacking positions, struggled to make it into attacking positions in the central area. I, I don't see the point in this. These team analysis, usually they contradict each other. Let's just get straight back into the second half. Um, I'll probably look to, if we're not going to be breaking this team down in the first sort of 10 15 minutes of this half I'll look to make a couple of changes Eden Hazard with the corner here swings it in out to go, uh, Kante poor shot from Kante Bakayoko holds it up and plays it forward and it's not gone anywhere the goalkeeper plays it out looks like they're playing a play it out from the back type of system Kante's won it back though two around Victor Moses Kante Bakayoko Morata back to Bakayoko, plays it out for Eden Hazard. Can he swing the ball in? No, nope, he's going to run it back in. Cuts the shy and shoot. Not a great finish. And with that, I think we're going to make the first changes in the game. I think we'll probably change the formation up and we're going to go to the 4 2 3 1. So with the 4 2 3 1, we've got to take Victor Moses off because he can't play right back at all. We'll be taking Gary Cahill off, who's the worst performing centre-back, and we're going to bring on Mesut Ozil to play behind the striker. And we're also going to take Bakayoko off. He's on a yellow card, and I don't want to risk uh, I don't want to risk us going down to 10 men. We're going to make all three substitutions before the 70th minute, so I'm sure somebody's going to get injured. But I, I, we need to we need to push forward and try and win this game after losing the first game. Fabregas with the cross in this time. Well cleared by them. Ozil's back to bring it forward. Rudiger out to Arda Turan. Turan crosses it in. Morata. I think that was a good save by their goalkeeper. And as I predicted, Alvaro Morata is now injured. Fantastic. I don't know if anybody else is finding this absolutely stupid, but 
Football Manager 2018 deciding that players can't play more than three games in a row without getting injured just is stupid. It doesn't happen in professional football. You don't get 40,000 injuries. I just FM18 is just taking things ridiculous. It's just it's just stupid. I played FM Touch 17 last year and I quite enjoyed the game but this this game is just so stupid. I've never ever heard of a player getting injured because he's played four games in a row. No, it, it just doesn't happen. It's just unrealistic. It's supposed to be a simulation game and you you can't play players for more than three or four games in a row. And Arda Turan has stuck that in the far corner. Absolutely brilliant. I didn't commentate on that because I thought it was going to be the last highlight of the game. Fabregas swings it in. It's well cleared. Ozil plays it into Turan and what a volley. Absolutely cracking finish by Arda Turan. And it looks like we're, we're going to look out here. And again, is that N'Golo Kante? Ozil swings the ball in. No, no, Kante flicks it onto Rudiger and Rudiger scored, has he? I don't know who they've given that goal to. They've given it to Kante. It must have deflected off him. And after the disaster that was Morata going off after 70 minutes, that's a, a really lucky win to that game. Um, we're really lucky there. We, we needed the win in this game because of the loss in the first game game in the Champions League group and we've managed to pull it off. Uh, I'm not sure how. Uh, two goals from N'Golo Kante, uh, which is unheard of, and Arda Turan with that crack and finish from the edge of the box. Um, it's gone from being what was going to be a disaster to being a, a good result that will hopefully help us push on and look to finish in the top two in this group. Okay, so the next game is going to be Liverpool. Um, so I'll be with you back, back with you shortly. So one thing I didn't do was take you through how we've gone since the last episode. Um, so if we just have a quick look, um, form has been absolutely dreadful. So obviously you were with us for the wins against Stoke and Oxford. Uh, sorry, Watford and Stoke. Uh, we then lost 4-0 to Man United. We lost to Crystal Palace. Lost to Red Bull Salzburg. Lost to Arsenal. And then we beat Swindon in the, the League Cup with... Um, the most rotated team we could possibly do. We then came back and beat Spurs at home, and obviously you were just with us for the the win against Ball. I'm not looking forward to to playing Liverpool. We've got injuries are plenty. Morata's now out for five weeks, um, so we've got one recognised striker fit at the moment in Batshuayi, which means if he gets injured, we don't have anybody to bring on for him. We're going to have to go to a strikerless system, which I've never used in my life. Um, I had a bit of a rant about FM18. I think I might have even called it FIFA 18 because I'm an idiot. But I, I just don't get the, the medical centre on this game. It, it seems to to try and say that players can't play more than three games in a row without getting injured and you've got to rotate, which is just utterly, utterly ridiculous. You go back to the 1960s and you had players playing 55, 60 games in a season, never once complained about it so it's just it's just stupidity and they need to fix that for the next fm or fix it with a pretty patch because this is just stupid so if we look at the team that we're going to be playing today we've got Courtois in goal back three of cahill christensen and rudiger zap costa is going to come in at right back alonso at left back again it's going to be in goal and back yoko with Arda Turan and Eden Hazard on the wings, with Michi Batshuayi up front. The bench has changed. We've got Lucas Mool, um, who's come in on there to cover centre-back. As Blakoy is there to cover the entire back five. We've got Ronnie Lopez, Cesc Fabregas, Meza Ozil, and Daly Blind, uh, because we've not got any attacking players fit at all, um, apart from those. So let's get into this game against Liverpool. I'm anticipating a heavy loss here because we're away from home and we haven't got anywhere near our stronger side because of injury. I seem to have skipped over the Liverpool team, sorry. I'll just pause it quickly for you so you can see the 
the team that Liverpool are using. It looks like they bought ex United right back Raphael. No idea who that left back is. And the rest of it seems to be players that are actually there. It looks like they picked up Bakary Sanya on uh, from the freeze. And they're not starting Sadio Mane, um, which in real life is suicide for Liverpool. But, you know, we'll see how this game goes. And it looks like we've got the first highlight. Kante plays it through back here, but Batshuayi has a shot and straight down in lays throat. Coutinho floats the ball in, it's cleared. He's got it again, though, and we've not closed him down at all. And Emre Chan, the most overrated player on Football Manager, for both this year and last year, has headed the ball in at the back post. Coutinho with a lovely float across. He wasn't even at the back post. In the middle of seven Chelsea players. He just out jumps all of them and heads it in the far corner. Courtois with the ball clear, straight to them. Henderson's picked it up. Back to Emery Chan. Henderson, Mo Salah. Good build up play from Liverpool. We've broken it down again. Back to why he can't hold the ball up. I don't know how this game thinks he's a, a complete forward, but it does. And at half time, it's Liverpool 1, Chelsea 0. Looking at those stats, we're lucky to just be 1 0 down. There's been, what, three highlights and one of them was ours. So, you know, things are positive from that point of view. But Liverpool have had so many chances there. We're lucky to still be in this game. Here we go. Here's another another inter- uh, incident of this team analysis just being a little bit stupid. So we've got Zappacosta won back more possession than any other player on his team. Zappacosta lost more possession than any other player on his team. What are you supposed to do with that information? Nobody knows. Let's get into this second half. Mignolet clears it. Rudiger's headed it forward, but it's cut straight back out. James Milner out to Coutinho. Coutinho's been allowed to come right away in and is shooting from distance. One thing that's helped us in this game is Coutinho must have had 10 or 12 shots from distance of those 14 that Liverpool have had, and that's the only reason why we're not further down. Right, I'm going to make a change now. So let's have a look. Nobody's playing particularly well. I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring Seth Fabregas on for Bakayoko. We're going to make him an advanced playmaker on support just to try and get somebody else helping out a little bit. We're going to change Zappa Costa to a wing-back on attack. Uh, yeah, we're going to make him a wing-back on attack and we're going to change N'Golo Kante to a ball-winning midfielder on defend just to cover off that right, uh, right back position when Zappacosta is going forward. We'll see if that makes any difference at all. If not, we'll probably look at taking Anders Christensen off and bringing on Meza Ozil and going to the 3-4-3. The three, three. Uh, sorry, the 4-2-3 one. Henderson into Zala Coutinho and he spooned over the bar. Coutinho must have had more shots than any other player in this game so far. Matip into Raphael, Emery Chan now, James Milner plays it out to Robertson, down to Coutinho, who crossed the ball in Firmino, and we're lucky again. Liverpool have just outplayed us here today. Right, there's 15 minutes to go. We're going to go back to the, the four, uh, 4 2 3 one um, Turan is saying he is knackered. So he's going to have to come off as well. Let me just fix these centre-backs so they're playing in positions that they're used to. Um, so we're going to have to bring Ronnie Lopez on for Turan and we're going to bring Mesut Ozil on for Anders Christensen. We'll get Ronnie Lopez going in and supporting Batshuayi. We'll get Ozil, although he's normally an advanced playmaker. I'm just going to have to... In fact, I'll leave him as an advanced playmaker. <laughs> And what we'll do is we'll change these team instructions. So we're going to take player out of the fence off. We're going to clear the ball wide. We're not going to look for the overlaps. And what we're going to do is we're going to be more expressive because we've got a couple of playmakers on the pitch. We're going to allow our players to roam from positions. We'll just see if we can do anything. We're going to go attacking as well. See if we can get ourselves back into this game. We haven't deserved anything at all. But 
you never know with uh, with FM. We might be able to to worm our way back into this game. Hazard is also looking knackered, so I'm expecting an injury in the next 15 minutes. James Milner with the ball in storage, and Emre Chan has scored a second. What a surprise. Milner crosses the ball in, storage heads it forward, it bounces back, and Emre Chan just gets the finish there. Alonso forward to Coutinho. Henderson, Rudiger's cleared it, but not very far. Again, Rudiger with it clear, I think. And Daniel Scorridge scores. Chan forward to Sanya. Sanya crosses the ball in. Both of those players could have cleared that. Coutinho picks it up, plays it back to Storage, who puts it in the far corner. And it's 3 0 to Liverpool. This has been a fairly poor performance from us, but I don't know what else I could have done. Ronnie Lopez with the ball in, straight into Mignolet. And this should be the last game, the kick of the game it is. So that's the end of this episode. Um, done well in the Champions League. We've now got, got points on the board in the Champions League and then uh, continued our terrible, terrible league form with a, a loss to Liverpool. I'm expecting that if I don't turn this form around properly in the next five or six games in the league um, you may well find that this save finishes because I've been sacked uh, we'll reassess and decide what to do from there if that does happen um, let's leave this match and see what the next episode is likely to be so I'm just dropping into the medical centre here to sort of explain why I think this game is broken. So, as you can see, what this game is saying is, despite having a low injury susceptibility and a medium training load, because Christensen has played four matches in the last 14 days, so we've we played two matches at the weekend and two matches in midweek, uh, which is not, not that much, uh, that... Christensen is now a high risk to a high risk to injury, even when their condition has gone back up before the next game. It's going to say the same thing again. In goal, can say the same. He's below average for injury susceptibility, yet he's a high risk. Marcus Alonso, high risk. Gary Cahill, high risk. Batshuayi, high risk. Batshuayi has come off the bench in two of those three games. He's he's not played three full matches. He's played. One full game and two 20-minute, half-an-hour games at the end. We've then got Bakayoko again, four matches. Two of them, I think, were off the bench. Turan, again, four matches. I think one of those was off the bench and three starts. Fabregas, as you've seen, came off the bench in both of the both of his last two appearances. And I think the other one he may have started. Why are they high, in, high, risk, high risk of injuries? It, it, doesn't work like that in the real world. You don't play three games in two weeks, two of which you came off the bench for twenty minutes, and all of a sudden you're a, you're in a high risk injury. This game is just broken. It's just stupid. Giuseppe Rossi, obviously high risk injury because he's a cripple. That's fine. I don't mind that. Eden Hazard has played five games in the last fourteen days. I don't know where it's it's managed to get that from because we've only had four, but he's only an increased injury risk, yet somebody who's played less games than him. It's a high risk injury. It's it there's there's no consistency here. It's it's just broken. This medical centre stuff is just silly. They need to fix it so that it's realistic. It, it's it's making me not enjoy Football Manager Touch 2017, 2018, whatever this is. The last game without this was difficult enough. Why why throw silly things like or players are, are more susceptible to injury if they play seven minutes in across four games, but because they played them across four games we're gonna make them injury prone. It's it's just beggar's belief. I d I don't know where this has come from, but it just seems to be a silly thing. Anyway, let's have a look at the, the fixtures coming up. So the next games will We'll play. We'll look to do the second game against PSG, I think. Uh, I did want to probably go a little bit further, but 
I'd like to get the the game against PSG. So I think what we'll do is we'll play PSG. We might even just do a single match episode next time and just do that PSG match and then look to go a little bit further so that we're getting closer to Christmas because we're going to be next episode is episode three. I don't want to be doing too many games, uh, sorry, too many episodes without doing many games between. So I think we'll look to do that second game against PSG, see if we can see if we can improve ourselves enough that we can at least compete against PSG. And then we'll probably come back the episode after that, maybe against Man City, maybe do Man City Basel, or maybe just do Man City. So that's the end of this episode. I know I've had a bit of a rant. I know I've not, not been uh, the happiest man on earth. I've had, a lot to say about FM Touch 2018. Um, if anybody else is having the same issues or has, has found out a way to sort out this ridiculous this in- injury thing, because you have players professionally that play every single game in a season and don't get injured, and that's not possible on this game. So what are you? What is it supposed to be? Because I thought Football Manager was a management simulator and it was a football simulator and it's supposed to simulate the real world in as close a deal as possible. And at the moment, it just it doesn't function as that. It it just seems to be a little bit silly. Um, anyway, if, if you've got any advice for me in the comments, please, please let me know because it's just, it's putting me off playing it now, to be honest with you. Um, I had injury troubles the last time I, I went through the um, when I did this offline, and I thought maybe I was just unlucky. But it seems to be this this medical centre, and it just seems so so bad. Um, and it, and it's like I say, it it instead of me picking up FM Touch like I did last year, where if I had half an hour spare, I'd pick I'd pick up my iPad and I'd I'd play the play a bit of FM Touch. I'm actively avoiding it now because it's not fun. Where's where's the fun in not being able to play your players where, for, for no good reason? I don't mind picking up two or three long-term injuries in a season. That's going to happen in the real world. I don't mind the odd, you know, a gas leg keeping somebody out because you be, they've been in a strong challenge when you're in the Carabao Cup or whatever, playing against a, a lower league team. But, what I don't understand is why playing four games in four games in two weeks, like professional footballers do, fairly regularly. Why? Why that means that they're then going to get an injury? It just it seems a little bit stupid, and it means that you've got to have three players in every position, and we can't afford to play the wages for three players in every position and compete. So it's just making this game very, very difficult. And so thank you very much for watching this episode. I know I've, I've been on a few tangents. So I've probably said thank you for watching the episode already and then added another little rant. Um, but I, I do really appreciate any views that you've got, any, any views that I get. Um, if you have enjoyed it or if you do agree with me, um, leave a like down the, uh, like below. Like I say, if you've got any advice for how, how we can fix, how I can fix this, this injury crisis and this, susceptibility to injuries I don't want to rotate N'Golo Kante every week N'Golo Kante last season played every game, every minute of every game of football for Chelsea and he was fine go back 10 years and Frank Lampard played 300 games in a row for Chelsea without getting injured and that was midweek Champions League games Premier League games Carabao Cup or whatever, Carling Cup games FA Cup games he played 60 games in a season 3 years in a row without injury it's not it's not realistic. So if you've got any any advice for me for playing my better players in, in the majority of games, I, I'd love to hear it because I, I just, I, I'm just i starting to get really annoyed with this game at the moment. Um, and it's probably making for some pretty bad content, and I apologise for that. Um, if you do want to see how we get on in the next game against Paris Saint-Germain, or if you want to see how, how this series ends, please subscribe to the channel. And thank you very, very much for watching and putting up with my ranting.